Hello all and welcome to our first episode of Curse of Strahd Overview Series. So we're going to be going over all of the lore of Curse of Strahd, the module, we're going to be going to all the different locations as well as how to run the module as a whole. I'm Dungeon Master Wade, we're going to be going over all the different stuff over this series of episodes. Today we're going to be going over the bare bones basics. What is the lore? What is the story of Curse of Strahd? We're going to be going over what Barovians are, how to start this campaign, and then a little bit about Strahd himself. We're not going to go too far today into all the different locations. We will touch on Death House. We will touch on the town of Barovia as well. Uh, but we're not going to go too far into the next episode. One thing about this campaign is it's a great Halloween campaign, especially in October. Um, I highly recommend this campaign. It's one of my favorites. I think for D&D 5e, it's one of the best ones. Just because, first off, Strahd, this immortal count, uh, you know, vampire lord, is something that is great to play as a DM characters hate them or love them it's a great thing to do now this campaign is great because it explores a wide variety of things such as building tension and anxiety gruesomeness dread monsters it's your typical gothic horror style campaign it's a fantastic one to run now with a campaign like there's just many things that you would want to go over and explore first things first is i always recommend doing a session zero for a campaign like this there is blood there's gore there is some different subjects and topics that maybe all the players at the table are not interested in or do not want in their game. So check in with them, see if there's any no-go topics like insects, spiders, certain deaths, monsters, etc. Now there are a few things about this module that make it really stick out for the DMs and that is the marks of horror. So there's a lot of things you can do to play on this like a horror style movie campaign. First things first is leave a lot to the unknown eye, a lot of unseen stuff. There's a ton of monsters in this campaign, but we don't have to show them every single second. Feel free to build up the tension. Maybe show small foreshadowing things like scratches against a wall or you hear a voice deep inside a house. You don't have to show the monster every 10 seconds or have a conflict. Build that mystery. And it's something that we see in a lot of horror movies today is we're not afraid of the monster. We're afraid of the what is it, the unknownness of the monster. Once you see the monster, you kind of know, um, like if it's Michael Myers in Halloween, you kind of know what to expect. But all those scenes where you can't see if it's just out of shot, those are the ones that build up that suspense. Another thing with this is make sure that you focus on things like descriptive words and writing um, how scenes look. Build up the dread or how the walls creak and all of these different things. Make it a story in a sense that the characters can really sink their teeth in, no pun intended, and lock into. Another thing for this is before you get started, you have to play a tarot card fortune teller to kind of decide on where the story is going to go. It's very unique compared to a lot of modules that are very kind of railroaded. Here's what you do. Here's how you set it up. This one can be played different times with different outcomes and locations of interest. So what you would do in this campaign is you have to figure out a few things before you get started with cards. Uh, different cards out of a deck you can pull out and these will determine things such as the location of the three magic items where Strahd hides inside of his castle, as well as an ally for the party. So you would do this before session one even begins to kind of get a base on where the story is going to go. Before we get started on anything, um, I just want to double down and say this is my favorite campaign. I love this one. In this series today, we're just going to be going on how to start the campaign, the first couple areas, what the map looks like, and then our next episode, we're going to really dive into the locations inside the towns and more. Without further ado, let's get started. So. There are many ways to start a campaign like this, this horror gothic campaign, and there's four main ones that come with the book. There's the plea for help, the mysterious visitors, clearing out the werewolves, and attack of the fog. The first one, the plea for help, is kind of a good one to start off with, especially for a party that doesn't look for conflict right away. The plea for help is the party is at a tavern nearby, and they discover a letter that is given to them um, from a mysterious individual. Now the letter will invite them to go to Barovia with an urgent request to help save a town. No other information is needed. This is a great one if they're looking to be more, you know, heroic and try to explore different areas. They would make their way into the woods and they would find their way into Barovia, which is this magical, mystical area where things are not always as they seem. This is a demi-plane. This is not the material world as we know it. The second one is the Mysterious Visitor, um, where an individual comes to the tavern and tells the party, hey, there are these strange travelers in the woods. They're causing a ruckus, they're fighting people. Can you please escort them out? Now the party will make their way into the forest 
into the mist and the fog and find these individuals who are extremely friendly and completely fine with moving. They wear this colorful clothing of purple uh, and more and they invite them to sit at the fire to tell stories. Now these individuals are called Vistani. Vistani are one of the three types of people you might find in Barovia, uh, including regular individuals, the residents, and what's called shells. We'll get into that later. But Vistani are these very outgoing individuals that they have a connection with the leader of the realm, Strahd, where they're able to leave, come and go as much as they want. Now what they'll do is they'll tell the group a story, get them interested, and then as they're telling the story around the fire, they will be transformed and they will be teleported into the land of Barovia. This is a great way to kind of get them into the land with a less conflict-based solution. Now another one is the werewolves. So clearing out werewolves, there's werewolves in the Slavic woods that are nearby and you need to clear them out. Now as a party, you would go into there exploring and as you go deeper, deeper into the mist, you would transform into that new realm of Barovia through the fog. That also is like the number one, uh, four and the final one, which is Attack of the Fog, which is in any campaign they're walking and they get engulfed by fog in which they're taken away and sent to Barovia. So what is Barovia in the first place? Barovia is a huge, huge area that is nestled between a mountain range and fog, protecting it from the rest of the world. This is a demiplane that is ran strictly by the Dark Powers and Strahd von Zarevich, which is the vampire immortal lord who runs this land. Today we're going to be talking about section A, B, C, D, and E over here where you would begin the campaign. Now this place is relatively small compared to a lot of different modules, especially like Tomb of Annihilation, which is a huge map. This one is not that big. It only takes a day or so to travel across the entire map from Barovia to Velaki to Kresk, all these different towns. And there's not many of them. Uh, there's only two main towns. There's Barovia, which is a small village. There is Velaki up here by Lake Zarovich which is a little bit bigger. And then we have the abandoned town of Kresk here by the woods. Now, these aren't really large towns and the occupants of the towns are not that interesting as they uh, have their own kind of strangeness to them, which we'll get into today. But first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the different types of individuals that you'll meet inside of Barovia. Now, Barovia is a trapped area where when people enter, they never can escape. And for Strahd, which is the leader of this area, he loves to keep people here suffering and tortured long term. Now there's three types of people. There are the shells, which are over here. These are individuals who are just soulless bodies that roam the land. One out of every 10 people in Barovia have souls. Nine out of 10 are these shells. These are people that don't have souls that aimlessly walk the land that are created by Strahd's own imagination. He creates these to help fill the population of this area. Then we have our regular individuals, our Barovians, who have souls, who one out of ten people have them, uh, who are just endlessly living inside a cycle of reincarnation inside Barovia. When an individual dies, their soul is aimlessly lost for up to decades until they find a new host. And once they do, they're able to be reborn and they carry old features of their past life. And now the final group that we already kind of touched on is the Vistani. The Vistani are individuals who uh, made a deal with Strahd after saving him long times ago uh, where they're able to leave and come back from Barovia as long as they can help bring more adventurers and residents into the realm. So these individuals kind of have a pact where they're able to come and go as much as they want. So as we head back to the map we're going to be going into section A and B. So as we talked about we want to get them into this world through the fog some way whether it's you know, the storytelling by the Vistani or stumbling upon the fog themselves, they will be teleported into this new realm. Now behind them in section A, they're going to see a large section that is full of um, strictly trees, evergreens, and a darkness to it. There is no sun inside Barovia. There's just a greenish hue of the sky, rolling thunder clouds. And another thing as well in this area is um, there is endless trees on each side of the roads. These roads are paved. Um, it's very eerie looks to it as you're kind of uh, ascending in this area. Now, as we get to section B over here, what we're seeing is a large gate. Now, this gate has a big insignia of Strahd on it. Uh, it is menacingly in size. And as the group approaches, the gates will automatically open themselves, allowing the party to enter inside. Now, behind the party, there is a wall of fog. And the party can see um, behind them, it's almost like a uh, natural barrier that's preventing them from going back to their own realm. If the party does decide to go into the fog, they can begin to choke, 
get lost, creatures can attack them. It will wind up killing the party if they decide to do so. So it is not a good idea to go back into the fog. And if you want to play on this and allow them to go a few feet in before these effects happen, you're more than welcome to. So as we move on to section A, which is this kind of dreadful road going up to the gates, we make our way over to section C. And what we find here is we see that there is a body that is laying in the middle of the road, motionless, that's half de decayed, deteriorated, and there's ravens and crows pecking at the body. Now under uh, further investigation, the body is like a pudding, it's nasty. You can find old adventuring gear. You can see the body was torn up by wolves or some other creatures, but you'll find a letter that explains this individual was trying to make a run for it to escape Barovia. He spent his whole life here and he can never get out. And in these final moments trying to escape, he was uh, a victim of the elements. Now in section C, there's also the Durst House, which we talked about in previous videos as a one-shot, the Death House. This is a haunted house by a cult of Gustav Durst and Elizabeth Durst. Inside this house is a great encounter to start out the group in. You have the two haunted kids inside the house, monsters inside and more. If you want more information on Death House, check out those other videos. I have a lot of information on that. It is a fantastic encounter. So as you move back over here, we have this haunting this as you're making your way down the road, creeping. Uh, some other things I would add as encounters here is ravens watching the party from a distance. Maybe you hear howling wolves and all these other different assortment of encounters that could happen as they make their way over the old Slavic road over to the village of Barovia. Now, as they're making their way over there, they also see what looks to be this large river, the Ivis River. Now, the Ivis River is a crystal clear blue river that kind of makes its way through the haunted fog of Barovia. And in this area, I would add some encounters. Maybe they see their reflection in the water where they're old and decayed. Uh, maybe there's ghosts of fishermen that walk down the different parts of the river who aimlessly talk to the party or do not associate with them at all. These are great ways to kind of break into this mold a little bit more. Now, as you move over to the village of Barovia, this is one of the sections that you can find, one of the uh, two towns that you can explore. This is a very small village of old Victorian style houses. Uh, this is what the map looks like here. You have an inn, you have a small shop here, which is Builder's Shop. Uh, overpriced items. We're gonna be going in more about the village of Barovia next episode, but just to go over a little bit, there is a inn, there is a shop, there is a large church here that is the main focal point to a lot of encounters, but there's not much else. Uh, all the individuals inside Barovia, uh, the village, they kind of hide and scurry. And a lot of the locals, they do not want to talk to any outsiders. Because in their mind, they've spent their entire life in this endless cycle. And they don't want adventurers or anyone to try to bring false hope to them. So, as we enter inside the village, it's old. It has these ramshackled houses. They have a fence that kind of makes their way around it, made out of pillars and different pieces of sticks to kind of prevent any creatures from crawling in. Uh, but not to all successes, some monsters, some wolves, some werewolves and creatures do make their way inside Barovia. Now there's a lot of different locations to go over specifically. Uh, however, for today we are going to focus just on one encounter inside this area. Um, like I said, most people are shells. There is a, a, a sense of aimless hopelessness here where, you know, no matter what they do, they can never escape Strahd's grasp. And one way they kind of deal with this is with Morgantha. Morgantha is an old lady who has a small stand that sells what's called dream pastries. These kind of custard filled or meat filled pastries, depending on which one you get, she sells in a colorful cart. Now these go for a few gold pieces each and they might even be willing to give some to new adventurers for their first time in Barovia. Now Morgantha is a sweet old lady, but secretly behind this sweet kind of look is a hag. She's a hag that creates these dream pastries as if they are a drug. When people eat these pastries, they feel numb, they go to this blissful place, and it's almost like a heroin-esque euphoria as they are just laid back, disassociated from this horrible world that they're in. Now, I would really play this on the party of everybody talking about how much they love these pastries, the taste, the feelings, and she's open to tell them, yeah, they do cause these hallucinogenic effects, but it does, you know, help you get through the tough times. So she's willing to sell these to the party, but what's more sinister is what they're made out of. Um, as you explore the windmill and other areas inside Barovia, you would find out that Morgantha the Hag is using children to make these dream pastries. They're using the bones and body parts to make these horrific items. 
So that's something I would definitely leave for a later chapter, especially with your group. Have them enjoy the dream pastries, give them some hallucinogenic effects, have them explore that world, but have them discover that on their own. Now for today, we were able to go over a wide variety of things, such as some of the lore of Barovia. We went over some of the locations. Next episode, we are gonna be going in more of what is in the town of Barovia, what is in the nearby sections, and how to play the story. But to summarize what we went over today, uh, first thing we went over is the lore of Barovia. It is a world that is ran by Strahd von Zarevich, which is an immortal vampire. Now he was given the area by the dark powers as a reward as he runs this land. A few ways to get the party in there, like we talked about, is through werewolf, um, the quest of finding the werewolves, trying to move the Vistani out of the woods, or just stumbling upon the mist themselves. Once they're in there, please lean on the heaviness of the isolation, the fear, the dreariness, you know, the creaks, and all the different anxiety building tension that you can do inside this land. I wouldn't throw too much at them, especially if you're throwing Death House at them early. Give them a little bit of a break to at least get to Barovia, the village, so then they, they can explore, learn about the shells, learn about the Vistani, and more. Now, as we talk about the shells, they are these non-soulless creatures that kind of aimlessly walk around these humans just without a soul. There are some individuals with souls, such as Ishmark and others that we'll talk about as well. Um, and yeah, definitely play on this, especially with that Morgantha encounter. It's creepy, it's weird, it's a good beginner kind of encounter for the party to explore. Thank you so much for watching, I appreciate you spending time with us today on Critical Failures. Uh, please feel free to check in with us throughout the week as we'll drop another video this weekend on Curse of Strahd, how to run it, the village of Barovia specifically. Now, we are going to be live streaming again Icewind Dale next Wednesday, 8.30pm Central Standard Time on Twitch as well as YouTube. So definitely check it out. We have the whole cast coming back. Uh, tonight we had some technical difficulties, so we did post a session recap instead. So check that out as well. It goes over all the pre-streamed episodes, things that didn't make YouTube and Twitch at the time, that builds the story of Kristoff, Scully, Liam, Lucadios, and everybody in between before we were able to live stream those sessions. Thank you so much for the time that you spend with us and to all my critical failures out there, we will see you on the next video.